Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Archana and I'm a homeschooling mom of two boys aged eight and three. So in today's video, I wanna to talk to you about a book that has made a serious impression on me and whose ideas and suggestions have really improved my homeschooling game. The book I'm talking about is Atomic Habits by James Clear. So ever since I became a homeschooling mom, I've become aware of the sheer magnitude of little things that I have to schedule and accomplish during the course of the day. But more importantly, never have I felt the need to invest more in myself or my own productivity than right now as a homeschooling mom. Now the rewards of this is not money or a promotion. It's basically the knowledge that you're doing right by your kids. Because as a homeschooling mom, you know that whether you have good days or bad days, your kids are constantly watching you 24 seven and kids are learning or basically just imitating whatever you do. And the reason I love Atomic Habits so much is its basic premise. Now, the author says that if you make tiny, minuscule atomic habits every single day, the compound interest or the long-term interest that it provides is astounding. Let's sort of make it clear with an example. Let's say you want to be a writer, right? Let's say you have an empty notebook and you decide to write one sentence, just one sentence every single day. Now, it's obvious that by the end of the year, you will have 365 new sentences in that little notebook. Simple as that, right? Now, conversely, he also says, the author says, that just like a 1% small change may not seem very significant, but it is very meaningful. Conversely, a 1% negative change in your life, one little bad habit may not do you much harm on a day-to-day -day basis, but over a long period of time, it will catch up on you. If you decide to take one can of soda with lunch every day, that's not much. It's not like you're gobbling a piece of cake or 20 donuts. It's just one innocent can of soda. But by the end of the year, that amounts to 3,285 teaspoons of sugar. Now I looked that up. Now that seems significant, isn't it? So when we first started homeschooling, my son could read uh, fluently, but he couldn't write. He just could, he recognized the alphabet, but he couldn't write at all. And I remember being completely overwhelmed. How am I going to teach this child how to write? How is he going to write essays and papers by the end of uh, middle school and high school? So I decided, okay, we're going to learn one or two new words every single day. And that's how we started. We started slow. We did one or two words every single day. By the end of the month, he was writing those one or two words. By the end of the semester, he was writing a couple of sentences. And by the end of the year, he was writing a paragraph. Now, this is not a significant achievement. And I'm sure that as homeschooling moms, you have all experienced similar achievements. Whether it is mastering mathematical concepts or learning a brand new language with new grammatical rules, it's all about making significant improvements consistently, small significant improvements consistently, which add up to tremendous improvement over a period of, period of time. So when I started homeschooling, I often pictured my son uh, my as a teenager hunched over a big book of calculus, looking very anxious and perplexed and me completely failing at um, you know, teaching math to my son. But after that first year of teaching him how to write, and then the second year, and then the third year, now I'm confident that I can handle that calculus beast when the time comes. So as the author says, you should be more concerned about your trajectory that you are on rather than your current results. So current trajectory matters more than your current results. If your child is not reading today fluently chapter books, it's okay. As long as you're reading to him every day, as long as you're building this relationship with him, as long as you're having these big juicy conversations, that means that you are on the right trajectory to building a reader. So what matters is not results, but trajectory. What matters is whether your habits today are putting you on that path to success. Are your choices today significant enough to put you on that path to success in the next 20 years? That's the real question. 
So I love what the author says about progress and breakthrough moments. He says that breakthrough moments are the results of several previous actions. He gives this really great example about the bamboo tree. Now he says that the bamboo tree spends the first five years of its life after being planted, building extensive root systems under the ground. And just in about six weeks later, after it's a, it has built this extensive root system, it breaks forth above the ground into shoots and leaves. Now that's what you see, but what we see, what we don't see is the five years that the bamboo tree has put to building this extensive road system. Now, I've also heard him in several other interviews, he says that if you spent a day with Olympians, with Olympic winners like Michael Phelps, for instance, you would see, I mean, he, that you would see that he has pretty boring days, that his days are basically spent um, in eating well and maybe, you know, swimming four to five hours and then going to bed early. There's nothing significant about his day-to-day -day life, but all we see are his breakthrough moments. All we see are, is Michael Phelps winning the gold? gold medal but we don't see all of these everyday practice that leads to his final moments of perfection winning the olympic gold just like you know you start dieting you start exercising you may not see any muscle definition or weight loss and then all of a sudden one day you stand on the weighing machine and you're five pounds less and all of a sudden you see definition you see abs right so it all happens the change happens the, the significant, visible, perceivable change happens all of a sudden, but, but behind that significant, perceivable change is basically days and days and days where the habit is gaining momentum. So same thing with homeschooling, right? I mean, I've already talked about the academic side of things, but if you want to, let's say, inculcate some morals and values and character building into your homeschool, into your way of life, understanding this is a real game changer. So let's say you want to um, instruct your child on something as simple as uh, the importance of completing a task from start to finish and not giving up halfway. Um, now, harping on this and setting a good example and gentle instruction, you may think that it is just going through deaf ears. But as the author says, the most powerful outcomes are delayed, right? So setting a good example and gentle instruction will definitely reap benefits in the long run. The second most important concept he talks about is that goals are not as important as systems. So what is the difference between a goal and a system? Now, a goal is, for instance, like I wanna lose 10 pounds is a goal. I wanna eat healthy is a system. So goals are about the results that you want to achieve and systems are about the processes that lead to those goals. Setting a 20 minute timer for your child and telling him to face the wall and read until the alarm beeps is a goal, right? So you have a goal that your child should read for 20 minutes every day. Now this is a goal. But on the other hand, raising a reader, setting up a home culture, a home environment in which your child just wants to pick up a book and read just for the sheer love of reading. Now, this is a system. One is easier to achieve, right? And the other one seems overwhelming. It seems so significant, right? But a system is is what will help you consistently achieve those goals. But a goal is short-lived. It's momentary. And after that, Alarm goes off, your child's going to throw the book and do something else. So which is more important? That's why he says, focus on the system and not on the goals. So another example, learning from workbooks at a given time within a homeschooling space um, is a goal, right? So you want to achieve this, you want to tick it off your planner, and that's a goal that you have every day. But raising a lifelong learner, right, where your child is learning constantly, he's picking up books, he doesn't have to be reminded, that is a system. Now, the reason I love this book so much is because um, as a homeschooling mom, you know, I'm also tempted to invest in a fancy planner and in books which tell me what a second grader needs to know, what a third grader needs to know, and to tick off those tiny boxes that, yes, he has completed his handwriting, he's completed his three pages of math, he knows how 
how to write a paragraph, but this book made me ask the tougher questions, right? So what system do I want to put in place? What role do I want to play in my son's life as a mother, as an educator? What kind of a relationship do I want to build with my son in this homeschooling journey? How do I want my son to approach learning? How do I want to teach my son things like resourcefulness, the joy of learning? Can he learn how to learn? These are the systems that I want to put in place. So I particularly like this one particular quote from the book, and I'm going to just read it. The purpose of setting goals is to play the game, but the purpose of building systems is to continue playing playing the game. So the most important question as a home educator that I ask myself is, how am I going to foster a lifelong love and joy of learning in my son? Now, asking this question helps me build a system in place and not just tick off grade relevant goals. Now, those are important too, but building a system is more important than achieving day-to-day -day academic goals because homeschooling is not a one-day affair. It's not a goal, right? It's a journey. It's a lifelong journey. Okay, so this is the part that I'm most interested in because I'm convinced about the efficacy of habits. But how do I put a good habit in place? And how can I teach my kid to cultivate good habits, right? So the author says that it is possible. It is possible to cultivate good habits and it is possible to remove bad habits. And he recommends a four-step process. So one is make it obvious, um, make it attractive, make it um, easy and make it satisfying. I'll explain with an example. So let's think of an example within the homeschooling sphere. So let's say you want to inculcate this habit of reading in your child. The step, the first step is to make it obvious. So surround your child's life with books, books everywhere, as unschoolers say, strew it along their path, right? So you can put it in his room, perhaps even in the bathroom if you don't mind, and maybe on the dining table when he's having a little snack. Not during meal times, important meal times, but maybe, you know, when he's having a snack. And better yet, maybe when you tuck him tuck him in at night and and just before turning off the of the light, maybe you want to sit with him and read a little bedtime story. And similarly, when you when you know in the morning when there's a little bit of free time, cuddle with him on the couch and read a little story. And then in morning snack time, when you're gathered around, maybe you want to tell him a story from a book that you're holding, so that he can associate this act of reading, this act of storytelling, with your presence and with these wonderful books that are strewn all over the house. So the first step to um, inculcating the habit of reading is to surround your child's life with books. Okay, so step two, the author says, is to make it attractive. The author says that habits are a dopamine-driven feedback loop, right? So having that um, hit of coffee, it gives you a surge of dopamine and you don't mind waking up in the morning, grinding those beans and pouring hot water over it. And even if a cup of coffee takes 10 minutes to make, you will do it because that dopamine driven feedback loop, it triggers you into action. So think of what will make reading attractive to your child. Definitely for me in our house, it is alone time with mom, right? So when I cuddle up on the couch with a cozy little blanket and hot chocolate with my son alone and with each of my sons alone and with a book they associate that reading with cozy time with mom with alone time with mom it fills their cup and the whole habit is attractive right so you think of you know what works in your home how can you make reading attractive to your child? How can you trigger or initiate that process of dopamine secretion, which your child will associate positively with this habit of reading? So step three, the author recommends is make it easy. A habit shouldn't be long-winded or very difficult to execute, right? Otherwise, you're automatically turned off from the habit. So how can you make the habit of reading very easy and attractive for little children? We've already spoken about this um, aspect of attractiveness, but how can you make it easy? Perhaps doing a little research on what would interest that specific child and strewing books along his path, which are... Uh, 
uh, with books focused on his interests. Even if people, you know, experts will name a twaddle, it's okay because you're just trying to, um, you know, initiate or inculcate this habit of reading in your child. And perhaps making it a special time that every morning from 11 to 12, we will cuddle up on the couch with our blankies, with a cup of hot chocolate, and we will all just have a quiet one hour reading to ourselves. Perhaps, you know, make it easy like that, that it's an easy thing that your child associates with, that reading is easy and attractive and enjoyable because I get to do it with all of these crutches and incentives. That's okay, you know, because you're just trying to inculcate the habit. And soon it will become so habituated and easy that he will end up doing it even without these incentives, even without mugs of hot chocolate, even without blankets, even without your presence, because it's become a habitual thing in his life. So the last step is to make it rewarding because the author says that the anticipation of the reward, it uh, it pushes us into action. So, you know, just anticipating that you will have your dream beach body um, can push you to go to the gym every single day. The anticipation of seeing lower cholesterol levels or lower sugar levels on your blood report can push you to, to hit the gym every day or push you to eat healthy every day. So similarly, how can we make the habit of reading rewarding for a little child? Now, we know as moms that reading itself is its own reward. Being able to be a good reader and dwelling in those ideas and in those books is reward in itself. But for a little child, how can you make reading rewarding? Um, um, I personally don't like to give money or, you know, allowance or, you know, some sort of even some sort of monetary reward just for having read for 15 minutes a day. But perhaps a, a wonderful fun trip to the library and a family lunch at a, at a favorite restaurant afterwards is a, a possible reward. In my house, um, I like to watch um, the movie with my son if he's read a book and I like to watch the We like to rent the movie out and watch that movie. So my son really loves reading that book because he knows he's anticipating that he's going to watch that movie with mom. We did that with Tale of Despero. We also did that with Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and he loved it. So he's asking me what other books have been made into movies because I want to read that book first and then enjoy um, a family movie night watching the movie with the family. So maybe your family has um, rewarding traditions like that. So maybe you want to look into that and make the whole habit of a reading rewarding for your child. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this book summary of Atomic Habits as it pertains to our homeschooling lives. So if you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and please hit the subscribe button and come back for more videos. I'll see you in another video really soon. Bye-bye.